Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I am a beauty enthusiast that loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup, but I do like to switch it up from time to time and throw in a little bit of fashion and some vlogs. So if that does sound of interest to you, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And today we are playing around in two new products. We have both the Natasha Denona Glam Face and Eye Palette. So I, of course, will be demoing both of the palettes on each side of my face, sharing with you my thoughts, and then at the end of the video, I will share some comparisons with some other uh, products from the brand that when I thought of these products reminded me of those so we can see you know, how similar they are or if they are completely different. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. And let's get right into this video. Okay, before we start, my eye right here is swollen. I, I don't know what happened, but it's really tender. That's why I don't have on any lashes and I just wanted to put it out there in case somebody's like, why does her eye look different? Maybe y'all can't see it too much, but I can feel it and it hurts. So, but I wanted to get this video up because I was very interested in these products and I know some of you all are very interested in them or you may be trying to figure out which palette will be best for you. So, all for the love of beauty, right? Right. So, like I said, we have both of the Natasha Glam Face and Eye Palettes. They do retail for $59. They both are currently back in stock at Sephora and they are both in stock on Natasha's website and on Beautylish. So there's a few different places you can pick up these palettes if one place, you know, happens to be out of stock of the palette that you want. I'm just holding up the light one here. So Natasha says this is a brand new size of palette for her. Um, it's the Do It All Glam Face palette that includes both eye and cheek essentials. She did create these palettes from her best-selling eyeshadow palette, which is the Glam palette. So that's what inspired these face palettes. She says that it comes with five ultra pigmented eyeshadows in her iconic buttery smooth formula and then two highlighting shades featuring a brand new formula that uses Japanese technology to deliver an extreme glow. So she wanted to create this palette as being a perfect on the go type of traveling palette that has everything you need for your eyes and your face. Some other details is that it provides maximum color payoff with minimal effort blending seamlessly to achieve vibrant, ultra pigmented looks. She says that these rich pressed pigment shadows and blushes leave the skin with an optimal texture and comfortable all day wear. And then lastly, it says that she made these with the highest quality pure color pigments, dazzling chroma crystals and luminous mineral pearls. It's buttery smooth, hydrating eyeshadow formula wears beautifully on any skin type and any skin tone. The products are cruelty free paraben free and made in Italy. So here is an up close look at the light palette. And as always, she does include a sleeve. Let me pull it down here. And as always, she does include a sleeve to cover the cream product. So we've got a cream blush, cream highlighter, and then her five eyeshadow shades. And then for the deeper palette, we have the same layout of having the cream blushes, of course there's a sleeve for the cream blushes and then the five eyeshadows here. There's a really nice size mirror as well. And I like this packaging, it's very sleek, quite thin. Here is her Glam Face palette. So it is um, a little smaller than the Glam Face palette and it is a little thinner than you know her midi size of palette. So I really do like this size. I like the reflective packaging as well. And um, I think it's great. And I like that each palette in terms of what it looks like on the outside is distinctively different. So there's no confusion or like, did I pick up the right palette? Like you can look at both of them and completely tell light palette, deeper palette. Okay, in terms of shade description, let's get into some swatches and then the demo. Swatching first from the light palette, we have the cream blush. This is a matte neutral pink. And then we have the Star Glow Highlighter, her newer formula of highlighter. This is a high shine light champagne shade here. And then for the eyeshadows, we have the shade Inner Corner. This is a sparkly metallic universal light nude. Then we have Transition, which is a matte light medium nude pink. 
thin crease, matte medium nude, outer corner, sparkling metallic medium rose gold nude, and then the shade Smoke. This is a matte dark neutral brown. So these are all the shades in the light palette and I think they are beautiful. This light palette, especially on me, and you'll see it in the demo and you can probably see it too just looking at the eye look. These shades look more um, cool toned against my complexion, but they're not so cool that I think if you're not into cool tones, it would turn you away. Um, I really do like it and I think these shades are beautiful. Now, getting into the deeper palette, here is the cream blush. This is described as a matte, medium, dusty coral. And then star glow highlight, high shine, medium champagne shade. Then we have outer corner, which is described as a sparkling metallic, medium dark rosewood brown. Transition, matte, medium warm brown. Smoke matte deep neutral brown inner corner sparkling metallic hot light medium warm taupe and crease matte medium dark mahogany so these are the shades right here these are the shades in the deeper palette and i think these ones are beautiful now the deeper palette surprisingly for me these shades are definitely more rose gold inspired. I thought just looking at the pictures um, online and also on her Instagram page, I thought that the deeper palette was just going to pull more along the lines of her mini nude palette. Um, but this definitely has more like rose gold, rosy hues to it, which I really think is very pretty. I also am very happy that there is a distinctive difference between the light palette and the deeper palette. Um, there is no confusion. You know, we've seen some brands, not to throw any shade, but we've seen some brands come out with two palettes, lighter and deeper, but there's really not too much of a difference between the two. And I think Natasha did an amazing job um, making sure that there are distinctive differences and distinctive depths and different tones within the lighter palette and the deeper palette. Now, something that's just me, it's just me, I, I, and I, I, I guess maybe I just need to get over it. What I don't understand, and maybe if you understand this, you can provide it in the comment section, please do. So when she, when you look at the lighter palette and look at the order of the eyeshadows, we have inner corner, transition, crease, outer corner, and then smoke over here. But in the deeper palette, the order is outer corner, transition, then smoke, inner corner, and crease. And I don't know, I, I, you know, I'm like, well, why don't we just put them in the same order? But you know what, I don't know, maybe she liked the order, maybe she thought that the colors looked better in that order in the deeper palette versus the lighter palette. I don't know, but I did notice that and I was like, interesting. Okay, that's not important. Let's get into these eye demos and face demos. So I started with the lighter palette. I am wearing it on this eye and I went in first with the transition shade. I did go in first with the Chantecai, um Next Generation Eye Base in the shade Medium. That is the eye primer that I'm wearing today. So I went into transition and blended that into my transition area. And this shade really did kind of blend into my skin tone. You don't see it too pronounced on my lids, but it does give me just a, a, a tone to the lids. Um, then I went in with the shade Crease. I kind of went in, I used these shades how she described them for the most part. So then I went in with Crease and I liked how this shade really started to carve out my Crease shade give my eye a little bit of depth but once again nothing too intense so so far these two shades are just giving me kind of a shadow to the eye but nothing too pronounced okay then i went in with the shade smoke use that for the outer portion of the eye and with the shade smoke this is what she describes as a matte dark neutral brown and i feel like this is where the eye look started to get cooler for me um so it didn't come off it doesn't, in my opinion, come off, I'm looking in, my, in the mirror, 
in my opinion, it doesn't come off obviously warm at all, um, but it starts to pull just a little cooler. But I was like, okay, I'm fine with it because I still really like the shade. And looking at it in the pan and also looking at it swatched on my arm, I definitely see that neutral to cool tone of the eyeshadow. So then I went in with this shade called Outer Corner and I used my finger because this texture is very, um, like she said, it's very glossy, it's very metallic, um, and it's also kind of creamy as well. So I was like, you know what, let me see it how it applies with my finger. And it applied beautifully with my finger. I did get a little bit of fallout, but I was able to easily wipe the fallout away and it didn't smear along my face or leave like a lot of residue. So I was happy about that. So I went in with my finger and applied the outer corner shade. Then I went in with inner corner and used my finger with that as well. And then I did, and you don't see this in the demonstration, but I did go back in with a brush to kind of like smooth out the edges and make sure it was kind of applied everywhere that I wanted to on my eye. And I really, really love these shades. They are so beautiful. And the formulation is definitely different. I have not seen this formula of eyeshadow in her other eyeshadow palettes. Um, and I really, really do like it. And if I'm incorrect in that statement, please correct me in the comment section and tell us what palette this formula of metallic is in. Cause I have almost every one of her eyeshadow palettes and I don't, I don't think I've experienced this eyeshadow formula. Then for the lower lash line, I just went in with the shade Smoke and blended that across the lower lash line. And then for the inner corner of the lower lash line and the inner corner, I went back in with inner corner, whole bunch of inner corners there and blended that in. And I love how this eye look came out. I think it's so pretty. This look right here is what I would definitely wear for like an everyday look, but I would also wear this at night. And I think this eye look and the tones of this particular eyeshadow palette really do pull like daytime appropriate wear. And you can smoke it out a little bit if that's what you would like as well. But definitely enjoying this color story much more than I thought I would. I will say that. Going over to the deeper palette, for the eyes, I started out, same order, started out with transition and put that into the transition. This shade, she describes it as a matte, medium, warm brown. And I definitely feel like it is warm with a hue of orange because when I applied it to my eye, I was like, okay, this is coming off like more terracotta than I thought it would. Um, and I immediately knew like, okay, this is a true deep palette because I feel like for me, this shade transition is not a shade I would use in my transition. I would use a lighter shade for that. So I was like, okay, Natasha, I'm here for this truly deep palette. <laughs> then I went in with the shade crease, used that into the crease, and I think the shade blended out really nicely, and I really like the depth that it brought to the eye look. Then went in with the shade called Smoke, and I really like this neutral brown. This shade, Smoke, I definitely see the neutralness of it, and to me, it doesn't pull too cool tone. It doesn't pull too warm tone at all. I think the shade Smoke is a beautiful neutral shade. So then, I took my finger, once again, went in with the shade Outer Corner, applied that. It applied just as smoothly, just as beautifully and buttery as the shades in the light palette. Took my finger and went into Inner Corner and applied that as well, and then took a brush just to even things out. For the lower lash line, I went in with the shade Crease and blended that like all across this area here. Then I went in with the shade Smoke and just kept it right here. So the shade Smoke blended into the shade Smoke on the upper portion of the outer lid. And then for the inner corner of the lower lash line and inner corner, can you guess what I went in with? Inner corner <laughs> and apply that right here. And I really like this eye look as well. I think this eye look is beautiful and like for me, this is a for sure nighttime type of eye for me. This is a daytime type of eye for me. Um, but I feel like for the deeper palette, if I wanted to make it daytime appropriate, I would probably stick with just medium and crease and use those two shades together to give me more of like a lighter look for this eye. Um, and especially if I didn't want it to be too smoked out. Now onto the face, went in with the light palette on this side. And I did notice something when I was checking the ingredients and um, how to use these palettes. For the cream blushes, she actually has a warning that says, use cream blush only on the face. And so that 
let me know, okay, granted we can tend to use makeup products anywhere on the face, but it's probably best not to use this cream blush on the eyes. Um, she did say that this is a pressed pigment formulation or these are pressed pigments. And I, I don't know if all of these would be considered pressed pigments, um, but these blushes, she did actually say warning use cream blush only on cheeks. So I just wanted to point that out. So took this shade right here and it blended that into the cheeks. And I think it just blended really nicely into the cheeks. I do like this tone of a blush as well. It doesn't come off too cool tone. It's very neutral um, with a nice color to it as well. Um, her description of a matte neutral pink, I think is right on. Doesn't pull too cool tone against my complexion. It also doesn't come off too warm. And it's a really nice compliment to the shades of the eyeshadows that she chose. But this Star Glow Highlighter, y'all, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for it. I was like, oh, well, hello. How are you? Loving this highlighter shade. I love a good champagne highlighter and this is giving it to me. She recommended for the blush to use a brush upon application, but for the highlight, she said that you could use a brush or you could use your finger. In the demonstration, I used a brush, but the next time I go in and try this highlighter, I am gonna try it with my finger because when I used, um, when I applied it with my finger right here, swatching it, it feels so soft and it feels creamy. Like it could be a cream highlighter. The formula is very hydrating and very soft, so. I could definitely see it being applied to the face with the finger and you not feeling like that's an inappropriate way to apply it. Um, so really, really enjoying the tones over here. And then with the deeper palette, use the same brush. I just wiped it off um, and went in with this blush. I think this is really, really beautiful. And the coral tone to it definitely complements the eyeshadow. I like the warmth that comes from this particular blush as well. And I think it's just stunning. And then the highlighter, same thing. This highlighter, when I got to this side, so I, I used my Sonia G um what is this the mini cheek brush to apply the highlighter so when i got to this side i did use a less of the highlighter because i was like okay i wasn't ready kind of went ham on this side so let's tone it down on this side and she's still really there and present and talking to you but i feel like this side's just slightly toned down and that's because i use less compared to this side so it's not like this highlighter is less intense than this one. I just use less. But really, really liking that this is still a champagne tone, but it is deeper, so it's going to be more complimentary for deeper complexions. And I think Natasha, I think Natasha killed it with these. Like I said, you all know how I feel about brands coming out with products um, that really work for the complexions that they're supposed to. And I have to give my hats off to her. This deeper palette I feel is a true deeper palette. I think it's gonna look so complimentary against deeper complexions and I think it's beautiful. This lighter palette I think also is really beautiful and I think she made it very well to where it's going to work great for lighter complexions but if you have like a more medium tan complexion especially if your undertone is more neutral or it's a little cooler and you fall kind of in like that medium to tan range, this palette will still work for you because I think it still works for me. It just comes off a little cooler against my complexion, but it doesn't look, you know, ashy or it doesn't dull my features or just does not complement my skin tone well. For me and for my complexion, I think she could have come out with like a true medium tone palette. And I'm just like, I'm not saying that she did wrong by not doing it, but I think that would have just been like bomb.com because I feel like for my complexion, the medium palette would be a mix between these two. Because I think for the light palette, I definitely get like a nice like neutral look neutral to cool tone look. For the deeper palette, this is very warm on me. Um, still complimentary, but very warm. So a neutral palette, a medium palette like this, that would have just been fire. So, but I'm not complaining at all because I think both of these are so beautifully formulated and the, sh and the shades that she chose I think are so great that if you are in the middle ground, you can just decide which one you like better against your complexion. So for me, 
because I know y'all are going to ask if I had to choose which side do I prefer. And surprisingly to me, I choose the lighter one. I really, I don't know, it's just something about this light palette and how it looks on my face. I really am enjoying the look that I came up with. I like the tones of it and I just think it's just, I guess it's something I feel like I don't have in my collection. With the deeper palette, I like this one, but I know if I'm like trying to do my makeup and I'm like, which one am I gonna choose? I'm, I know I'm gonna choose the lighter one over the deeper one more often. Not saying I won't choose the deeper one, cause I will. I'm just gonna choose the lighter one more often. I don't know, it's just something about this lighter one that I really, really enjoy and I really, I, you know, I don't know. I just really enjoy this one and I just knew for sure that I was gonna go for the deeper one. Um, but I really like this lighter one. So let's do some comparisons now. And you guys tell me which one you think looks better against my complexion, because I would love to know your thoughts. First, let's look at the Glam palette, because this is the palette that she said inspired both of these eyeshadow, both of these face palettes. And when looking at the Glam palette and looking at the eyeshadows, we, let's see, let's do it like this. We do not see a repeat of shades in the glam palette with this face palette and same with the deeper palette when i was looking through my eyeshadows i was just like okay i'm so happy to see there's no like outright repeat of shades and things do not look the same which i think is really really great um the next palette i thought about was mini nude so here is mini nude this is one of my favorite palettes just overall from the brand the formulation is beautiful the shades are wonderful and i think this palette is like if i could say like my perfect medium toned palette in terms of like neutral shades kind of on the go types of shades for every day and then you know i can smoke it out for a night time so i really thought that the deeper palette and the mini nude would be closer in match but as you can see the tones are very different um, once again, there's no repeats of shades. And then of course, for the metallics, the formulation is different. And so then I was like, okay, maybe it looks closer to the lighter one. But once again, I don't see any outright significant uh, similarities between the two because the lighter palette, like I said, I think this one pulls very neutral, which she said it when she was um, telling us the undertones of the shades pulling more neutral where I think mini nude is pulling more warm then I wanted to take out the mini glam palette because why not so here's the mini glam palette and I mean I don't think I even have to show you comparisons but I will there's definitely no similarity between me glam and the light palette and the same for the deeper palette very very different and then I thought, let's look at the bronze palette because I was like, all right, the bronze palette might look very close to the deeper palette. And here we go, so here we go. Looking at them, I'm like, okay, there's a couple of shades that might look the same or similar, but then I'm like, the formulation is different and also the tones are different. So for instance, I was looking at this shade called Deep Dive and I was like, well, maybe that one is similar to Smoke but i'll do a quick swatch so we can see them here is deep dive from the bronze palette and there's smoke so i mean you can see the differences right there that they're totally different um different undertones different colors just in general and once again looking at these two palettes together i was like yeah there are no real similarities which for me I was very happy with this because, you know, I like I said, I have a lot of her palettes and, you know, I don't always want to repeat the shades um, in one palette with another one. I would have been okay with it, with this being like a face and an eye palette because it's like cool. If, I, if there was a color story that I really enjoyed, it's like, well, I get it now with face products. But I was like, you know what? I'm happy to know that there's not really, there's no repeat at all and there's no palettes that I have from hers that really come close to matching the shades that are in either one of these um, face palettes. Now for highlighter, I definitely wanted to look at her I Need a Glow highlighter because I'm interested to see how similar it is to the Star Glow highlighters in both of these palettes. So let's do some swatches so we can see. 
So here is I Need a Glow. And let's put this one, let's see, put this one right here. So here is I Need a Glow. And then this is the Star Glow from the lighter palette. And then this is the Star Glow from the deeper one. So I think in terms of tone, I think the I Need a Nude highlighter looks similar to the Star Glow in the light palette, but the formulation is different. So these look very similar and I feel like the undertones look very similar as well, but both of them kind of have like that pinky hue to it, even though they are a champagne shade. But with the Star Glow highlighter from the light palette, the formulation is much more creamy um, and I think it definitely pulls more champagne-y than this one does. The one from I Need a Nude, I definitely see more of like that kind of rose gold hue to it with a mixture of champagne. Um, so I think if you have the I Need a Nude highlighter and you really enjoy it, then if you were interested in the light palette and you know trying to figure out if this shade would work for you, it definitely would work for you if it worked for you with the individual palette, um, but the formulation is different and I think we definitely get more of a high shine formula with the Star Glow highlight from the face palette. Let's look at this Pat McGrath highlighter. This is the new one that she came out with in Lunar Nude. Um, this one is reminding me of the highlighter from the light palette. So let's see, where can I put this at? I'll put this, put this right here. So there is Pat, this is Natasha's I Need a Nude, and then this is the one from the face palette. And once again, I think we can definitely see a difference between Pat's highlighter and Natasha's highlighter. Um, I think Pat's highlighter for sure is pulling much more pink in its tone versus the champagne shade of Natasha's. Um, but I do think that they are a little similar because Natasha's has like that pinky hue to it as well. For the deeper palette, I wanted to look at the LYS um, highlighter in the shade Champagne because I don't know, I think these might be, might be similar in tone. So maybe swatch it right here. So looking at the two, and looking at them, they look very, very, very similar in tone. Very, let me do, let me swatch them on the back of my hand so we can get like a better look at it. So we have LYS and Champagne, and then we have Natasha's from the Deeper Palette. They look very, very similar. I think the LYS one is pulling more Champagne-y, um, and, and the Star Glow highlighter from Natasha is pulling more of like a, a deeper champagne, but they do look a little similar. They actually look quite similar in their tones. Here is the LYS, LYS highlighter in the shade Genuine, the rose gold shade. Let's take a look at that next to the deeper highlighter. So this is the deeper one from Natasha and this is LYS in the shade um, Genuine, the rose gold shade. And these two actually, I think, are closer in tone than these two. So this is LYS um, Brave, the champagne shade, and this is Genuine. I think Genuine is much more closer in tone to the highlighter in Natasha's um, because both of them have that rose gold hue to it. And I think the major difference is that that the Natasha shade has a champagne shift to it versus LYS doesn't. Um, but those are very close in tone. Interesting. If there are any other highlighter swatches or swatch comparisons that you are interested in, definitely leave them down in the comment section because I could just post pictures of them on my community board so you could take a look at them. Those were just some of like the outright highlighters, eyeshadows that came to mind. And like I said, I am so happy with this collection of face palettes that she came out with. I'm looking forward to seeing her doing more because like I said, I think she could come out with a, like, a more medium toned one for this. She could come out with a warmer version of this lighter one and then like a, med a more neutral version of this deeper one. Like I think there's so many more face palettes she could come out with. 
I'm excited. I will pick them all up because I really enjoy these. Formula-wise, I mean, just beautiful. All of these um, eyeshadows and face shades really came off just beautifully on the face. I had no issues with them at all. There was no skipping, no, no anything. I mean, she nailed it. 10 out of 10. Recommend both of these face palettes. Um, very happy to see that they're both back in stock so that if you do want to grab them and save a little bit of money during the Sephora sale, you can do that as well. But you can also buy them, like I said, on her website and on Beautylish. So the possibilities of getting these palettes are very good. And I really think if you get these palettes, you will enjoy them because I really enjoy them. I think they're, like I said, I just think they're beautiful. I have nothing negative to say about either one of these um, face palettes. I think she nailed it. So those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. How do you feel about these face palettes? How do you think she nailed them in terms of shades and colors, undertones and all of that? Um, like I asked you before, which face palette do you think looks better on me? The lighter one or the deeper one? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.